own consulate. And the right way or the wrong way? The Trump legal team prepares responses to Robert Mueller's written questions, but will that really get to the truth? Giving written answers to written interrogatories, it's very easy to monkey around with your answers. Good day, everyone. I'm Alex Witt here at MSNBC World Headquarters in New York. Let's get to what's happening right now out there. First up this hour for you, a new poll out today gives a hint of what might happen in the midterm elections now just 23 days away. A Washington Post poll shows enthusiasm is up across all demographics, but greatest among younger adults, non-white voters, and those who say they favor Democrats for the House. A separate poll also out today shows former Vice President Joe Biden by far the leader for the Democratic presidential nomination in 2020 among Democrats and Democratic-leaning independents. That's followed by Senator Bernie Sanders. And here's what the senator had to say about it just a short time ago. I say that we have three weeks to go in the most important midterm election in the history of this country. And I think that that is what we focus on right now. Uh, we have a the presidential election coming in 2020. We will see what happens. But I think it is very wrong to deflect attention from the need to end one-party rule uh, in Washington right now. Joining me now, Jay Newton Small, contributor for Time Magazine, and Laura Bassett, senior political reporter for the Huffington Post. Uh, ladies, we welcome to you both. Um, I want to get to the polls on the midterms, what Bernie Sanders had to say there. First, though, the, the number of voters likely to cast their ballot, that is up to 12 percentage points um, from that which we saw in 2014. So do you think this is the blue wave that Democrats are hoping for, Jay? Well, I think for me, the big question is actually this one particular demographic, which is non-college educated white women. That was really the demographic that swung 2016 for Donald Trump. Um, they originally were against him just after the whole sort of Kizir Khan, Gold Star family uh, kind of scandal after the Democratic National Convention. Uh, they swung more towards him uh, before the debates and then swung away from him during the whole sort of entertainment tonight groping scandal. Um, but they ended up really swinging hard towards him by the end of the election, and he won them by a margin of 28 percentage points, which wow. uh, actually bettered Mitt Romney's margin, yeah, by, by, by eight points. And so it was a huge blowout for him with non-college educated white women. And the question is, with that demographic, um, if, are they going to show up for Donald Trump, or are they going to show up for, or, and Republicans in this case, or are they going to show up for other candidates? Their, their enthusiasm is up 12 percent since 2014, but I'm wondering now, like, which way they're going to go, because in recent year, in recent months, they've been trending away from Donald Trump with the whole sort of uh, Stormy Daniels accusations and with Brett Kavanaugh's uh, confirmation, and so I think that's always been, to me, the key demographic in this election. That is extraordinary, your chronicling of the Libby extent to which they swung on, on all those different topics. Um, so Laura, the Democrats are laying the ground for what they plan to do if they take back the House after the midterms. You have House Minority Leader Nancy Pelosi saying that demanding the president's tax returns, that is one of the first things that they would do. It's the easiest thing in the world, but that's absolutely nothing. I'm curious, is she right? Is it that simple to get the president's personal tax returns? I, I certainly don't think it's that simple at all, especially if uh, Republicans hang on to the Senate. I hope that Democrats have a stronger plan than that. A couple years ago, Democrats controlled the House and Senate, and they didn't do much with it. Uh, so I'm interested to see what they do now. I know, I know there's, they've been kind of trying to downplay this talk of impeachment, both with Trump and with Kavanaugh, which uh, I think a lot of people on the far left would like to see uh, both of those men impeached. I don't know that it necessarily helps Democrats to start talking that way because people really want to see what kind of policies they're going to offer if they're in control of the House and potentially the Senate to help people to make education costs lower, to, to fix the health care system. Um, so I, I don't know that focusing on Trump's taxes is actually going to help them that much politically. I'm curious what you think on that uh, topic, Jay, how much that would buy the Democrats releasing Trump's tax uh, taxes. Rather. Is there a way to gauge the impact? Because I'm just going to say anecdotally, I've spoken with a number of Republicans who cast their vote for Donald Trump, and they've said the reason they did is because he's an outstanding businessman. They felt that he was going to turn the economy around, uh, that he's a billionaire, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. If the taxes reveal but, that he's not as much of an outstanding businessman to the degree that you know they voted for him, does that influence voters? 
Alex, I think that the real danger for the Republicans and for Donald Trump in Democrats taking either the House uh, or both the House and the Senate is this sense of investigation, whether it's his taxes, whether it's investigating Kavanaugh's accusers. Um, if you listened last weekend, Democrat Jerry Nadler from Maryland, who would be the House Judiciary Chair, uh, gave the, the sort of Saturday radio address, the, the, the weekly radio address for the party, and he listed a long list of the things that he would want to investigate should they take over the House. I think you're going to see a ton of oversight and a ton of investigation uh, by Democrats into Donald Trump, not only the taxes, but also into Russia collusion, uh, whatever Mueller comes up with. I think it's going to be sort of a, a field day for them uh, because they have, they'll suddenly have the ability to investigate everything. Hmm. Um, in the race for the Democratic nomination to face Trump, you heard Bernie Sanders saying, look, don't want to focus on this right now because we should focus on, on what immediately lies ahead. He's in second place. Maybe that would be part of the reason why he wouldn't want to focus on it right now. But we have former Vice President Biden with a substantial lead. Do you think he, Laura, is the best chance for Democrats to win back the White House at this point? I mean, those numbers are pretty impressive. They're impressive, Alex. I'm, I'm surprised by them. I, I don't think that it's a great idea for the Democrats to kind of re revive this Biden thing. I think the same thing might happen with what happened with Hillary, is that people are, are tired of seeing the same faces for years and years and years, and they want to see some, some fresh blood. They want to see some fresh ideas. The Democratic Party is moving a bit more left. Uh, I think it might be smarter to put up a, a progressive more in the style of, of Warren or Sanders um, to really excite the party. I don't know that Biden is going to do that. Okay, uh, Jay and Laura, please stay with me right now. I'm going to get back to you guys in just a moment because also new today, we have new reaction from the Trump administration and the fallout of the Saudi journalist disappearance. Let's go right now to NBC White House correspondent Jeff Bennett, who's 